Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. I'm your host, George Ellick, and this is the first day, the Thursday of Aintree preview of the Grand National Meeting. And I'm joined by two very, very expert hosts, absolute experts in the, of the game, uh, both Ed Quigley and Andrew Thornton joining me today. And, and Ed, normally when we've been speaking over the last few months, it's been about Cheltenham and you live very close to the race course. And we've been asked, able to ask about the weather and other, and other things. But Although I can see the sun streaming through the window next to you in your home, just just near Presbury Park, um, that you can't be the weatherman, the local weatherman for us in, in Liverpool. So instead, I'm going to ask you for some of your best. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm guessing you've had a few tasty days out at Aintree, and um, you'd, you'd be pretty gutted to miss it this uh, this year. Yeah, funny you should say that. I think the last time I was there, but two years ago, it did nothing but rain for three days. Yeah, but, I um, <laughs> it was, but it was uh, it was a fantastic. Uh, yeah, it was Tiger Roll winning, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I, I do love Aintree, and uh, by and large. The weather forecast. My my mole, aka my weather app, does say um, it's generally going to be pretty nice all week. Chance of a few showers uh, Friday evening or the night eve, night before the Grand National, which would be perfect, really. I suppose if things do start to liven up by the Friday afternoon. But yeah, look set fair for lovely racing, lovely ground, and uh, really looking forward to it and some some cracking racing on the Thursday. Yeah, looking forward, hopefully this time next year, to be going back up to Aintree. Always that Saturday night in Liverpool is a cracker. <laughs> although I hope that next time I, <laughs> I I have that Saturday night, I won't need um, someone to send my phone back to London uh, after me a couple of days later, which was what happened last time, which was... <laughs> A story for another time. Those, uh, day, those, those days are gone for me, George. I'm, yeah, I'm back, in, <laughs> back in my hotel by nine. Um, yeah, absolutely gone. Gone at the game. <laughs> gone, ab- absolutely gone. In what way? In what way? Uh, um, <laughs> the old petrol light comes on like it, it never used to. It never used to. We'll see. We'll have the uh, the odds checker betting show social up there next year, maybe. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep you out after nine o'clock. Um, <laughs> Andrew, you, most of your days at Aintree, you, uh, you weren't able to, to go out until the early hours, or at least if you were, I'm sure you wouldn't admit to it. But... Um, but tell us, I mean, you have looked a little bit at the what's going on weather-wise and ground-wise uh, for the weekend. And, and I, I think you were saying off air that they're going to have to make sure that it's not too firm uh, for, for certain reasons. So let us know what you reckon the ground would be like come Thursday. There'll be no firm in it. That is guaranteed. Oh, uh, no, of course. Uh, absolutely no firm in it. It'll be, it'll be good to soft good in places on the first day. Yeah. That's, what they will, that's what they will be aiming for. And that's what it will be. There'll be plenty of juice in the ground. Um, and yeah, it's a dry forecast. It's the winds around, so I would say the ground will be certainly quicker than it was at Cheltenham. But we say with the the water in the do up there nowadays, it'll be like a carpet. There'll be no excuse for anything. So yeah, ground conditions. I would be looking at you know you, you you're definitely not going to want a mud lover, um, but something. I, I think you you'll be no excuses for anything. Let's get into the racing then. We're going to go through the cards on Thursday. We're recording this early on Tuesday afternoon. So final decks are just out. The markets have reformed, um, but the prices are probably fairly volatile. So please uh, direct your your anger elsewhere. If we flag up a bet at a certain price and you log on and you see it's gone, I'm very, very sorry, but it's just what we have to deal with. Um, and opening up um, here with the uh, SSS Super Alloys Manifesto Novices Chase, the grade one, do download the Odds Checker app in order to follow these races as we go through them for the best prices. Bookie offers free bets and the place terms as well. Uh, the 145 uh, is the first, and Fusel Raffles is the 9 to 4 favourite ahead of Hitman at 130. The Shunter have been left in here at 9 to 2. Now, if you're going to listen or watch both the Thursday and Friday podcast, this will be the first about 15 times you hear me say the Shunter's name. Um, but the Shunter, unsurprisingly, a sea of blue as it stands at 9 to 2. Elder Allen five to one. Uh, Protectorat is nine to one alongside Umbregado, and Phoenix Way is the outsider of seven at twenty to one. So just seven run as it stands. It means only two places, a quarter of two. Andrew, come to you first here for the opener on the Thursday. Give us a winner. Hitman. I'm all over Hitman here. Um, just, I just feel that this this track should suit him absolutely down to the ground. He was unlucky at Sandown when he when he fell in my book. Yeah. Just there was so there was quite a few horses this season at Sandown have come down at one at that railway fence. There's the dip on the landing side. You don't get that at Aintree. It's as flat as a pank. There is no dips. There's no nothing will catch you out. He's got a lofty reputation. He's missed the Cheltenham Festival. 
And for, for me, it's a horse that I just think a, a lot of it. When you look to the, the way the fences are spaced out around Aintree, they come in a regular pattern. I think it's just tailor-made for him. And I think it could be the start of a good day for Harry Cobden. Um, Paul Nichols is at target in this meeting. His horses, the top and bottom of his, the horses, he didn't have that many horses that went to the Cheltenham Festival because they weren't good enough. This is the meeting that he has targeted and he's firing all his best ones here. Very good prize money on offer. He's missed Cheltenham. There's, there won't be as many of the Irish turning up. The shunter, big offences at Aintree. Mm. That's the one thing that would worry me with him. Um, Fusel Raffles, obviously, you know, his favourite. He was second to Chantry House. Asterian Falange was just behind back in uh, back in third place. Asterian Falange subsequently has been well beaten at Fairy House uh, the other day. I'm just not sure whether that form he he was he was second he was best of the rest. Chantry House he doesn't do much in front. If he was what I call a horse that runs right through the line and doesn't pull up, I think he'd have probably won by the best part of ten lengths. But he's not that kind of horse. So. Hitman for me is the value, full stop. Hitman, the value, full stop at 130. Before I, I come to you, Ed, just another quick word, Andrew, because it's it's handy that you mentioned this at the, at the top of the first entry preview. You mentioned the fences at Aintree and you know you're somebody who rode around Aintree for a long time and we always hear about the Aintree fences as fans of the game but can you just kind of summarise how much of an impact that might have if you do have a horse who maybe doesn't clear them quite as well as others? It'll knock you out of your stride pattern that a little bit more. Um, they, they, there's not quite as much belly on them as there is at, at Cheltenham and it's a sharper track. It's a, it's a quicker track. Um, the bends are very, very sharp. Mm. Suit some horse. No, I'm not saying it won't suit the shunter. He might well go and he's defied logic <laughs> completely <laughs> this season uh, by you know hurdles, fences, Ireland, England, Scotland. <laughs> you know, uh, will he be fresh? It doesn't matter. He's as hard as nails. If there's any chinks in the armor of the others, I just feel that Hitman. Has has a lot of quality. Not that the shunter doesn't have quality, but you know it will catch up with him sooner or later. This will be his third run inside a month, mm. and uh, he's travelled backwards and forwards. Emmett Mullins, well, he's a chip off the Mullins block. Certainly um, <laughs> so um, is. He's you know we might be completely wrong. Might have a com- loads of egg on our face. You know, Hitman. He ha- he has his flaws, and he can make. The odd mistake here and there, but I just think that this is this is his kind of race. Not too many runners, and I think you, I'd, I'd say off the back of what he did at Newbury last time, Harry Skelton won't be Harry Cobden. Sorry, won't be hanging around. Keep mm. it simple. Get on with it. Yeah, some rumours that the shunt will be heading out to Japan for the Olympics. The 110 meter hurdles come <laughs> the summer. Uh, <laughs> he might be heading over to Nakayama for the grand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the race over there. They wouldn't put that past them. Ed, you've been sitting quietly. Time, your your time to shine in the first. Give us, yeah. uh, give us your thoughts. Yeah, hit man all the way here. Definitely, uh, really exciting. I mean, we talk about the shunter. We were discussing the, the entries, the declarations were just dropping before we were recording, weren't we? It was where was the shunter going to run? Well, he's running in this. As regards to the shunter, I think yeah, he's had a busy schedule. This is a bit of an afterthought, isn't it? Uh, whereas with hit man again, we've talked about the Paul Nichols angle. This is the race he's been targeted at. It's limited evidence so far, but a flat galloping track appears to really suit. You know, he won by a distance at Foss last. Newbury looked really happy at. Uh, at Sandown, tricky fences, undulations, didn't look quite as comfortable, admittedly, uh, um, in, in grade one company. And when he, when he was still going well when he fell behind Sporting John uh, back in February. I, I just think this looks tailor-made for him. The horse has thrown in a couple of dodgy leaps. Um, he won't be able to make these here uh, back up. In, the, in this company, but he's unexposed. He's going the right way. Uh, I just really like him. Um, I, I think he'll, Harry Cobden, as Andrew says, there'll be no messing around here. He'll get on with proceedings. So, Fusion Raffles, I think, is going to love the ground. I will love the trick, will love everything, but I just don't think there's as much improvement in him as there is with Hitman. I think he's the unexposed type who, you know, he's officially rated 151. 
Uh, I think he could prove a lot better than that. So, yeah, I'm hitman all the way here. Hitman all the way. Before we move on to the second, Ed, I just want to ask you about Eldorado Allen, who's a, a horse we've spoken about before, who yeah. put in a, you know, might have been beaten 12 lengths, but put in a mighty performance behind Shishkin at Cheltenham. Any part of you tempted to to think that, you know, a repeat of that performance could, could put him pretty close? Not personally. I mean, he still, I mean, he was beaten 12 lengths by Shishkin, wasn't he? Was he beaten eight and a half, nine lengths by Shishkin the time before? I think, I think Eldorado Allen was very much ridden to place, if that makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Uh, whereas, yeah, Captain Guinness, all mankind went hammer and tongs. He was given a really clever ride, I thought, by Harry Cobden, picked up the pieces and got some got some prize money and got a nice second place next day. Uh, I think you could be slightly fooled into thinking that was a really good run, when perhaps I think it was just a very tactically astute run on the day. Yeah. Um, I think the step up in trip will probably suit him, it has to be said. But again, we're... I just I cannot get any confidence behind these Colin Tizard horses at the moment. I want to, because I think they're all bubbling under. And as Andrew says, they could just <laughs> suddenly go bang and they, and they all go right. But um, I, I just think Hitman's the class act here. I'm really looking forward to seeing him. And um, yeah, I, I think he's the most likely winner. Hitman, 130 for both Ed and Andrew. Ed, we'll stick with you for the 220, uh, the Doombar Anniversary Juvenile Hurdle, another grade one where Mon Morale for Paul Nichols is the... Oh. One of the early hot pots of the festival, five to six with William Hill, that standout four to five with most firms. Adagio, five to two, that's a bet Victor. And then 12 to one, Paros, uh, five and 20, 14. You know, this looks like a match on the face of it. Five and 20 unbeaten um, is, is 14 to one. Um, but a match at the, at the top of it, do you subscribe to that or do you think there's any value at, at, at one of the other four? Yeah, I generally agree with that. I mean, for worth, worth noting, this race is really cut up because it sounds like the trainers, um, we've got a, who we've got, Tritonic, Hiros de Soy and Hugh Gree, are perhaps all going to go the novice hurdle route and get weight off them yeah. uh, for listening to their trains. They're going to go that angle. So this has really cut up. Uh, I think Mon Morale is the right favourite. But again, his price is now looking pretty skinny, isn't it? I mean, he's done absolutely nothing wrong. He's hacked up the last two times. However, the form has been pretty let down, let's say. I mean, he, he stuffed yeah. Nassalam last time out. That horse was well beaten in the Boodles. The horse he uh, beat at Doncaster in the grade two was ironed out in a minor event since. So his, his form, in the strictest sense, doesn't really stack up. But the manner in which he's gone about doing it uh, has been excellent, hasn't it? In, re- in regards to five and 20, looks exciting. Again, another unexposed one. It's just one of those that I can't get my head around. If they were meeting in a handicap, Mon would be giving him 15 pounds. So um, by that logic, you've got to be with Mon Morale. Adagio has lots of good form this season. Uh, I just wonder whether this is a little bit too much of a test of speed for him, personally. You know, he was very hop- happy at Chepstow and Cheltenham earlier in the winter on very soft ground. This would be a totally different ball game uh, relative to those tests, I think it would have to be said. So, uh, and, albeit he did run very well in the Triumph Third or when finishing runner-up. So, I'm with Mon Morale, but uh, I loathe the back of horse. It was he a shade of odds on now, purely yeah. on, on the... It's a juvenile race. There are unexposed horses in here, but again, um, a lot, lot of the theme for the week. Um, Paul Nichols with a strong hand, and this looks, when his actual words, his best chance of a winner this week uh, with Mon Morale. So the, the likely winner, but not much juice in the price, I guess, is the... Yeah, uh, that would be how I'd sum up. Is yeah. steer here. Andrew, yeah. do you agree? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, if, you, if you could sneak a bit of even money somewhere, you'd be, yeah, I think you'd be very happy. Uh, you know, is uh, look at his form. It's all, it's, you know, Doncaster, Haydock. Yeah, he didn't beat very much, but it was more the manner and how he did it as, yeah. as anything. And the time figures were pretty good from, from his perspective. Travels, jumps. There's not. There's there's no negative. There's zero negatives in his in his makeup. Um, I I think the right thing to miss Cheltenham as well because he's a big, strong individual. Probably a touch on the weak side because he hasn't filled his frame yet. Hence the why you stick to the sharper tracks. Now Haydock nowadays is a very sharp track and whizzed round those bends under Sean Bowen and no uncertain fashion. Um, five and twenty. Been the filly gets this seven pound allowance. She's a four-time winner at Musselburgh, round a sharp track. A completely, it'd be like the little and large show when you see them yeah, line yeah. up. Mm. She's 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 as hard as nails. I could see her for the forecast, the one to follow Mon Miral home, because I just feel the dad's yours a real grinder with plenty of cut underfoot. Um, he just looks like he really enjoys the juice. We mentioned that it'll be safe ground at Aintree and there'll be plenty of give. Will there be enough 
give to see the best in the Adagio? Um, I'm not so sure. Um, Paros, well, it was a bit of a no contest really at Muscle, but the second horse that Brian Hughes rode didn't 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 line up, didn't perform, didn't jump. Given a tactically astute ride by James Bowen out the front, and it was a day at Muscle where very little came from off the pace. The one thing you're guaranteed in this race is end-to-end gallop because five and 20 can roll along and Paros can roll along. That should just set it up for, for Mon Miral uh, in my book. And I think five and 20 will be the one that could just be the one for the forecast betters. So Mon Miral there, maybe if you can find a market uh, without Mon Miral, then uh, five and 20 mm -hmm. could be one to look at there. I'll just quickly check. No, nothing there yet, but do keep an eye on odds checker. I'm sure that market will come up fairly soon. <clears throat> so both agreeing that Momorale the likely winner. On then to the 250, the Betway Bowl and Clan Desobo is the five to two favourite ahead of waiting patiently at seven to two. Native River, four to one. Tiger Roll, five to one. Amazing what a change of yard can do, eh? At Cheltenham Festival. <laughs> uh, incredible stuff um, for Tiger Roll at Cheltenham. Um, but running in the Betway Bowl, we'll get on to that in a second. Mr. Fisher, 17 to 2. Clondor Castle, 9 to 1. 18 to 1. Real Steel. ASO 40s. Military 125s. Now, which one of you? Because let's just touch on Tiger Roll before we get on to the race. Do, do either of you have, have strong views that you want to talk about Tiger Roll running at the Betway Bowl rather than running here and what chance we give him um, coming into this? He's running where he's running where he's running, Tiger Roll. You know, it is what it is. He's got to carry eleven seven in this. He'd have only had three pounds more in the national. <laughs> he was, they were thinking about carrying eleven nine in an Irish national. And he only has eleven ten. I just I think it's um it's it's unfortunate. You know, long gone are the days where horses carry twelve stone in a grand national. Eleven ten is a fair weight for any horse to carry. Michael, look, they decided not to run in the race for their own reasons whatever they were that's completely up to them um but we are where we are we're running in the bet in a in a graded a graded one which the horse has he ever lined up in a grade one chase i noticed he lined, lined up in a grade two chase at uh clon mel back in 2017 and pulled up <laughs> um but you're bearing in mind you know he's Whatever you, whatever it is, I'm still happy that he's lining up at Aintree. It's not in the national. It's with, He's lining up in this race. I'd be fascinating to see how he runs. Should he be five to one? You know, that has got to be a backable price. <laughs> you know, if, if he, it, are we going to find out how good the, the real Tiger role is? You know, he could go and blow this field apart. Um, I just think it's intriguing. You know, waiting patiently is in here. He's he's probably the best named horse in training <laughs> <laughs> because the owner has to be very patient to see him. Um, he's 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 fragile. He's not the easiest to train. I I, I can't have native native river because the ground he look you know he's going to have all the fences in. He's jumping, but is the ground going to be soft enough? Clanders Obo. He's a top class horse. But there's just that little question mark. Is he as good as he used to be? Even though he's only nine, he's been to some fairly big parties in his time, a bit like Ed Quigley. He, <laughs> he, doesn't, he, doesn't miss a, he doesn't miss too many parties. So for that, for that reason, I'm going to go with Tiger Roll because oh. he is the horse in here who is, although he's 11... He's unexposed in these grade one races. He could just be a different a different class. Um, so yeah, Tiger Roll through the elimination process at five to one would be just exceptional value. Five to one, Tiger Roll, a horse is no stranger um, to entry, who is visually very very impressive at Chatham Festival. Ed. Yeah, well, as someone who's, yeah, as I said, likes to go to bed at nine o'clock and um, has never <laughs> been to a party in my life. Um, no, I'm totally in a disagreement, Andrew, here. I, I think Tiger Roll's a woeful price. Um, I, he's he's 11. As I say, it's, you've got to go back to medieval times since he last completed a race over regulation fences. He was racing the ambulance last time he ran in, as uh, Andrew says, in a grade two at Clonmel. <laughs> this is a world of difference from 
racing against 11, 12 year olds in the cross country as he is a specialist in. Uh, this is a great one. I, I generally think he's really up against it personally. Uh, having said that, I don't think it's the deepest of great ones, but got a very long story short. Uh, I've been harping on about this horse for ages, uh, over three miles, Mr. Fisher. I think this is this is his race. Um, I, I just watched that, uh, the Ryan Air chase back. Now, obviously, you just look at it, it says he's pulled up. That does not tell the whole story at all. Um, he made an absolute horlick to the water jump. He left his back legs in it, yet he still managed to close. He made another fiddly error. Then coming to three out, he watched the race back. He's closed on the bridle to two and a half lengths behind Alaho. Everything else is out of the washing. I mean, you've got very good horses like Imperiora, Melon, Sam Crow, totally spent. He's still there, and then bang, he belts the third last, and he subsequently pulled up. Yes, okay, the fence is there to be jumped. But it was really listening, interesting listening to Nico de Boinville in the aftermath. Said there were just, he had to have the horse at full revs the whole way over the two-and-a-half-mile trip. He was just going half yard too quick for him. We really must go three miles. And I just think good grounds can be absolutely perfect for him, or at least it's going to be beautiful. As, as uh, Andrew says, like a carpet, there's going to be no excuses on the ground front here. And I do think there's three miles of suit. He's unexposed. And I just really think this is the race for him. And I, I think he's, he's massively overpriced to it around the, uh, the eight to one mark. I really do. I, I mean, as far as waiting patiently goes, it's just becoming a, a tripless wonder, that horse, a lovable horse, but you run him over two, you run him over three, you run him over two and a half, just seems to find a way to keep being beaten. And uh, no matter what you do, uh, real still was last seen in the King George and burst a blood vessel. Not really short. Sure. Native River. Well, if he was outpaced at Cheltenham um, over three and a quarter miles at the age of 11, I mean, on on better ground around entry, it's hard to see him having the, the gears these days as, as lovable as he is. So, yeah. And then it leaves you a clan Zobo. Potentially has gone a little bit stale, you know, on official figures. Should have beaten Secret Investor last time out. Uh, when he ran the time before on official figures was the best horse, didn't get the job done. I think that's why Paul Nichols just stuck the cheap pieces on to try and really buck his ideas up a bit. And coming here fresh about chat, not chat and battle will probably suit him. So I, I personally, I think it's between Clander Zobo and Mr. Fisher, but I really think Mr. Fisher is the value here. I think the, the pulled up for the Ryanair is a little bit of a red herring in the sense of what he, he did get round and was pulled up. He was still banging contention when he did make a admittedly a really bad error and then was pulled up. But uh, the clear round here, I expect him to flourish over three miles. And yeah, I'd be uh, strongly in the Mr. Fisher camp to beat Clander Zobo. The, the only one thing that Native River would have in his advantage in this race is he's the likely pace angle, whereas the, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be hassled for the pace as he was in the Gold Cup. So he, he will be able to warm himself up into the race. Mm. But if um, if I was Colin Tizard, I'd be going up there and asking if they can put another 10 mil on <laughs> in, in watering, just to, just to make sure that it is 100% safe. Yeah. So Mr. Fisher, 17 to two best price at the moment. That's with Bet Victor and 888 Sport. Eight to one elsewhere uh, a strong selection for ed who cannot have tiger roll at all so one of you two will be looking i hope you'll be texting each other um <laughs> what, whichever way it goes come three o'clock on on thursday afternoon uh onto the entry hurdle now the betway entry hurdle and mcfabulous is the 130 favorite ahead of abracadabras at four to one jason the militant nine to two brewing up a storm for ollie murphy is uh five to one song for someone 17 to two Bouva Dare 11 to one uh, 12 to 1 silver streak, 20 to 1 bar. Ed, stick with you here. You oh, get the first run for the, the entry hurdle. Yeah, this is totally confusing um, in the sense that there are six horses in here rated 158, <clears throat> 154, 153, 155. You can essentially throw a blanket over these. Mm. Yet the market would suggest you couldn't. There's a, the, the price difference between your abacadabras and your silver streaks is totally at odds with what the the BHA ratings are, if that makes sense. So someone's wrong, and I haven't quite made my mind up who it is yet. <laughs> if, if you took away if you took away all the prices from the horses and said to me, who do you think will win? I would tentatively go with Abracadabras because I think he's a he's a speed horse. I think this flat track will really suit. He'll travel into this race as well as anything, uh, and then it'd be a case of what he finds off the bridle. But given the fact Silver Streak is four times the price, and let's, you know, look at it factually, Silver Streak would be giving the entire field weight in a handicap. He would be giving the favourite five pounds in a handicap. He's four times the price. The ground's come in his favour. I just think it's one of those where my, my mind is torn purely prices versus form, if you see what I'm saying. I, I think I think there's, there's, there's not much between these, yet the market is suggesting there is. 
And I'm in the in the cap that I really don't think there is much between them. I'm, I'm in agreement with the kind of the assessor here. I think there's there's a couple of lengths, if that, between half dozen of the horses. So on price grounds, I'm with Silver Streak. I think he'll go forward. But Fabulous is the joker in the pack, if you like, given he's got, he's the stayer. You know, he's been bashing heads with the likes of Paisley Park and suddenly he's in against horses who've won and been placed in champion hurdles. So this is a totally different kind of ball game and dynamic. So I, I think listening to Paul Nichols as well, they're not going to hang around with McFabulous. The last thing you want to do on a horse who's got three mile form is see this turn into a sprint against champion hurdle class horses. So I think McFabulous will go forward with Silver Streak. I think it'll be an, an honestly run race. I think Abracadabras will definitely travel as well as anything. I just wonder if he's a little bit short at the prices. Uh, it's a really intriguing encounter at the price is though as i say it's silver streak if 163 is officially the best horse in the race and he's nearer the outside of the field than he is the favorite so something's not adding up and i'm gonna at the price to take a chance of silver streak each way silver streak is 12 to 1 with most firms at the moment that is the best price uh silver streak 12s andrew well uh, ed had a go at me about tiger tiger roll silver streak he won't get the trip in a bus. <laughs> he won't get two and a half miles. He's by Dark Angel. It's it's the pedigree is all sprinter six seven furlongs. I just won't get home. I think Evan Williams is. It's a case of where else do I go with him? Um, you know, if we don't roll the dice, we don't know. But just can't see him lasting home, and especially with the pace in the race, with some for someone in there, McFabulous. It isn't going to be a crawl. So, sorry, Ed. He might be in front of two miles, but you've just got that extra half a mile to get over. And I think that's. I think if it was a two-mile race, it'd be half the price. That would be my take on it. Um, it is fascinating. McFabulous, he's been one of those horses for me that, gosh, I think he was absolutely cherry ripe for first time out this season. And you thought, gosh, is this the next horse to to take it up to Paisley Park and the likes. But I just wonder whether he's, that was him. He was, he was fitter than most at the early part of the season. And has he plateaued? Has he got that improvement in him? He's been kept fresh for a flat track and two, I'd say two and a half is his trip. And the ground at probably at uh, Fontwell last time out was just gluey, sticky, and it wasn't really his gig. And he had to give the winner six pounds down there. So, I'll, I'll forgive him for that. And song for someone against Goshen. Well, if it was if it was gluey at Fontwell, it was like <laughs> rice pudding at Wincanton. <laughs> he just it was like trying to gallop through rice pudding, just like glue. He couldn't get his feet out the ground. Brewing up a storm, fascinating him. Obviously tried chase and didn't work out. You'd have to throw him into the mix. But um, the hot combination of Cheltenham. I think Jason the Militant is very interesting for, for Henry de Bombhead. Upped in trip. And I thought the run when this horse beat uh, Pity Mouchoir last time up, giving Pity Mouchoir, I think it was nine pounds. Pity Mouchoir ran a blinder at Cheltenham behind Belfast Banter in the county hurdle, giving that one 19 pounds. I know he's come out and been beaten since when falling the other day. But that form, to me, reads well in the context of the race. And I think the step up in trip half a mile for Jason the Militant, the Irish might just go and have the value in here and is in each way proposition. We've seen how the Irish have been so dominant in the, in the hurdle races per se. And I think that Jason the Militant can, can come, and, uh, come and take a little bit more of our coin back to the Irish. <laughs> Jason the Militant, 9-2 to two with Paddy Power, 888 and Betfair Sportsbook. Quigley might have floored Thornton briefly with Tiger Roll, but Thornton's come back swinging <laughs> with Silver Streak there. Uh, looking forward to adding another um, dimension to watching the racing on Thursday, knowing that you two are locking horns. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Um, on then to the uh, the Fox Hunters uh, and Bill Away, obviously very unlucky. One of the, I think, seven horses that are back to Cheltenham that finished half a length or shorter in second which is always exciting uh bit away is the uh favorite here at the moment um priced up at three to one uh cat tiger is four to one uh sam and teagle is six to one late night pass ten to one some man ten to one uh tango de julie 12 to one alongside dashing park dashing park sorry 12 to one 20 to one bar andrew um a bit away 
I think, well fancied that day and uh, just was touched off by a very impressive winner. Does he make amends here? And I think he was touched off by a very impressive ride as well. Incredible, yeah. That was it was um, it was a top class ride, and I think that was probably off the back of you know he gave Langer Dang a blinding ride as well, Larkin Williams. Yeah. Um, so just wonder whether that'll have just taken the edge off Bill <clears> away. <throat> you know, we'd say the turnaround, and obviously we got a drop back in trip as well. And to me, we're, we're off a level playing field. William, funny enough. I think your 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 ally, as in Will Biddick, who trained Pollock uh, Pollock Bay to beat Bill away at the Cheltenham Festival, might be just the man to go and deny you once again with Samati <laughs> Gal. Yeah. has some very good form around this uh, this Aintree Test in the Topham and the Grand Sefton. Plenty of placed efforts in there. The horse loves the fences, and I think I think Paul's got him in. He's in cracking form. Um, got. Beaten down at, um, at Fontwell last time out uh, by by a, a horse that's been in a very good form called the Galloping Bear, um, who's come out and, and won again since. I think I think that's probably very good hunter chase form, and I think the better ground at Aintree will suit Samatigal. But the, just having the the um, the ex, well, the horse just comes to, to to life at Aintree. Paul Nichols' good record as well over the Aintree fences. You mentioned about Nicky Henderson. Paul Nichols has got a, a good record over the fences as well. And Somatigal for me, with been the fresher of the two horses, comes out on top for me and with the prices. Somatigal for Andrew, six to one across the board. A few firms, Paddy Power, William Hill, Bet, Victor Unibet already paying four places as well. Ed? Yeah, we've been disagreeing on everything for the Thursday, but I'm totally in agreement here. Yeah, Somatigal, um, been tra- traipsing around in the mud. Over three miles plus, not what he wants. Backing trip here. Uh, this is his trip. This is his uh, track he'll enjoy. Better ground and um, comes here fresh as daisies. Yeah, I think Smetical's got a, a a rock solid chance. You know, the the Cheltenham race is much more of a test of stamina. Again, they go quicker here over this shorter trip. Uh, the ground relative to Cheltenham is going to be livelier as well. So yeah, uh, Smetical uh, six to one or whereabouts. thereabouts. Yeah, he, he's the selection for me. Metagal six to one, a double selection for the Hunter Chase, the 405 Aintree. Two more to cover. We're going to be doing the handicap chase now and then finish off uh, with the Mare's bumper um, in the handicap chase, the Red Rum handicap chase. Getaway Trump is the 11 to 2 favourite, head of Destrier and uh, Frero Bamboo at 7 to 1. On the slopes, 8 to 1. Uh, Editor de Gite, 10 to 1. Zanza, a bit of blue on odds checker on Zanza at 11 to 1. Uh, Dostal Phil, 12 to 1, alongside Gaelic Coast, 14 to 1 bar. Ed. Yeah, this is where we get it all back uh, from the Charter Festival here, George, with Zanza, <laughs> who, uh, if you remember rightly, was one of my, um, my yes. strongest handicap fancies of the week. And uh, I was absolutely mortified when, given a very patient ride by Richard Johnson, he was quietly picking off his rivals and moved into about sixth or seventh. And then the favourite, embittered, uh, fell in the grand annual, more or less brought him down. And he was pulled up soon after. That was uh, really annoying that. This is the time to get it back. Obviously, there's no Richard Johnson around this time, but uh, Michal Nolan will be taking the ride. The horse has been left on 145. My worry, uh, if we go back to the Cheltenham podcast, was that perhaps a flatter track would suit. Um, perhaps Cheltenham is in his bag. Well, I've got no excuses here. You know, when this horse, he actually tanked around Newbury on uh, on decent ground earlier in the season, off 145. He can be a little bit of hostage for fortune, which is going to be his negative because he's going to be a patient rise. There's going to be a big hurly burly contest. There's bound to be, uh, by law of averages, some carnage of some sort in front of him. But I just think he's he's got to be better than one four five. You go back to a Cheltenham race in December when he was cantering, absolutely tanking, coming to three out in the race won by Sky Pirate. Of course, Sky Pirate's gone on to win the Grand Annual, and Zanza in the Grand Annual had an eighteen pound pull with Sky Pirate. So essentially, Zanza's the moral winner of the Grand Annual by about three furlongs, and we'll see this here today in this contest. <laughs> so he's, he's got his ground off one four five. We just have no tomfoolery or loose horses or Father Christmases on the on the course. A bit like Kempton will be absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I think double figure price. He's he's cracking Zanza. He's my selection. Zanza, 11-1 to 1 with Bet Victor, Bet Fred, Betway, Boyle Sports at the moment. But as I say, a bit of blue around, so that price might not be hanging about. The quickly millions of <laughs> crashing the price as we speak. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, look, I, I was all over Zanza at Cheltenham as well. and he, His jumping was good at Cheltenham. 
but he just he looked like he was standing off. He was being, he was being very brave on the way around. I'd agree the better ground, the better flatter track will suit him down the ground. Couldn't put anybody off back in him. But of the others, I can't understand Gallic Coast being as big as he is. Because bearing in mind that Musselburgh, he gave, he gave I think he, he gave um, the favourite in here, Getaway Trump, um, a pound. Uh, he was getting a pound off Getaway Trump, sorry, at Musselburgh and a beating. But he's, he's receiving lumps of weight off him this time around. Probably because of his poor run last time up at Ludlow. But when you look through his form, he's a better horse left-handed. I think he won at Musselburgh maybe by default. Um, but his form going left-handed is a lot better. He just has that tendency to, to lean a bit that way. He, he'll be suited by the track. He's got form, you know, winning form at Bangor, Faken and Doncaster. You know, around those left-handed sweeping tracks. Mm. And um, I, I think he's, he's, he's still well handicapped in here. And as I say, it didn't pan out for him last time at Ludlow. He just missed a couple of fences, never really got into any kind of rhythm. But I'll forgive him for that, back on a, a, what I would say a sounder surface and back in Donald McCain's backyard, as I would call it. <laughs> you know, the likes of Bangor and Aintree, this is, this is, his, this is his cup of tea. So I think he's overpriced. Uh, and what he is, and like you said, Xander's just probably needs a little bit of luck in running, and I think he'll he will be behind Gallic Coast, who likes to sit in behind the pace, probably just down the paint. Gallic Coast twelve to one, pretty much across the board. Two double figure selections there for Andrew and to Ed. Final race of Thursday. The final race we'll be previewing here, and again, it's, it looks like a bit of a match on paper. It's the Mayor's Bumper, and Eileen Dover is the eleven to ten favourite stand out that price that is with William Hill at the moment even money elsewhere and LA Bell is the 11 to 4 second favourite again with the same firm 14 to 1 bar I mean I guess you can never really call a bumper a match because as we know often um, big price horses I mean they're only sent there because they're fast really no one's sending their their bumper horses to entry uh, to make up the numbers you wouldn't think um, but treating it as a match I guess Andrew can you see past uh, Eileen Dover do you think LA Bell will serve it up well or is there anyone else you could see crashing the party oh Eileen Dover all day I, I love her. I think she's a cracking filly. Yeah. I think she. I'd be very surprised if she didn't end up winning a Group Two on the flat in the summer. I think that's where we, 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 we'll see her the rest of her career ending up. Uh, just she, you know, she 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 has a. You know, we saw Collier Hill obviously running uh, um, for Alan Swimbank. Mm. I, I think the way that Pam Sly holds this horse in the regard that she holds her in. You look through her form. She has blown horses into, into next week. You know, <laughs> Grand G came out of the back of getting beaten out of sight of market raising and winning a grade one for Willie Mullins. Um, you know, she just got so much. She's just talented. You know, if it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't a, a race at Aintree and if she was going somewhere else, she'd be five to two on. I think yeah. it's more the fact that it's an entry race and you think, God, oh, should she be this short? She could end up in a very good price. I just I think you put the price aside. I think I think she's exceptional. Ed, can you see past Eileen Dover? Uh she looks exceptional. Again to echo Andrew's sentiment. Uh but I've got to be honest with you, if I'm looking for the winner in a in a mayor's bumper, I'm I'm in I'm in deep trouble by the time it comes to this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it sounds like she's gonna have a well, they hope quite a fruitful flat campaign as well. Um, I think Pam Sly's words were last thing we want to do is get a bog down in, in tacky ground. So I think they'll be looking for some nice nice summer targets on the level. And yeah, look, I mean, we shouldn't be disrespectful. There's a whole host of unexposed, unbeaten bumper runners in here, aren't they? Like mm -hmm. from the, you know, we've got Nicky Henson's represented, represented and some, uh, you know, Alan King as well. So look, in all honesty, I expect to, to win. She looks really good, but um, I can never be very confident in a, in a, in a mare's bumper when there's a whole host of unbeaten mares in there. I think one at a bigger price, finest view for Alan King. Uh, yeah. Four by passing glance, who won a whizzed round Lingfield. If you're looking for one to back at an each way price, Alan King's got a good record in the race as well, and uh, that would be my selection as a big as, as one at double figure price. 
25 to 1 finest for you currently with Paddy Power and Betfair Sportsbook. And again, probably on the day, there'll be a market without Eileen Dover as well, in case you want to take the favourite out and try and get a big payout for second place. That brings us to a close for our Thursday preview. We'll be recording a Friday preview shortly as well. So make sure you subscribe to the Odds Checker Betting Show podcast and to the Odds Checker YouTube channel where you can find all of our previews there. We have also just recorded a Masters preview, not with Andrew and Ed, I should say, but with uh, with Niall Lyons and Ben Coley. So do check that out ahead of what is a bumper weekend of sport hopefully we've given you a couple of winners many thanks to andrew and ed for their insight today do enjoy the racing enjoy the weekend sport and please do gamble responsibly